All right. <clears throat> now here we have a sicha, a speech, and by the Lubavitcher Rebbe, it's written in Yiddish, because the Rebbe originally spoke it in Yiddish. It's a speech that the Rebbe gave in 1956. Huh? One minute, one minute, yes. 1956. And it's talking about, no, 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 sorry, 19, 1959. 59. Yes, okay. Some of it was 1956, some of it was 1958, okay. <clears throat> and it's a speech that the Rebbe gave about Parshat Bahar, this week's Torah portion. And it starts off with the same question that we had before in the, we just learned the Mimer, which is evident to the eye. As soon as you read the sentence, it says, when you come to the land of Israel, you have to rest one year. <clears throat> Six years you should work, and the seventh year you rest. <clears throat> so the question, of course, is when do you rest exactly? It says when you come in, you rest, and then six years you work and you rest. It doesn't say you rest again. Not only that, if, if you rest the first year that you come in, so what are you resting from? Resting from, you have to rest from work. You have to do work and then you rest. How can you rest the first year? Right. That's that's really the second question. The first question is even more, and this even Rashi asked the question. The Torah portion starts off by saying that God spoke to Moses at Mount Sinai and he said, right, this commandment of the Shemitah, the seventh year. God spoke to Moses at Mount Sinai and he said, the first year you come to the land of Israel, don't work. Six years you should work. And then the seventh year you don't work. That's it. What that's what God said at Mount Sinai. God said the whole entire Torah at Mount Sinai. At least the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> the Ten Commandments, no, that's also not the whole Torah, but at least it contains the whole Torah, it says. Of all the things that the Torah picks to say, that God spoke to Moses at Mount Sinai, and what did he say? The year you come into the land of Israel, don't work. And then six years you should work. And then seventh year, don't work. That's it. That's what God said. That's called the Shemitah. Shemitah is the seventh year. <clears throat> that was such a tremendous... Uh, um, introduction. This is what God said to the Jews at Mount Sinai. Don't work on the seventh year. Next message. One second. That's all God said to Moses at Mount Sinai. That was it. And that's the question the Rebbe is going to ask. What does it mean? Okay, of course we know that God does not make a mistake. So it must be that really this is a tremendously important commandment. This commandment of not working on the seventh year on your land. This is only in the land of Israel. This is, doesn't work anywhere else. This land does not apply anywhere else. Oh, this commandment, only in Israel and only, only to Jews. In the land of Israel. Okay, only to Jews we can understand because God gave the Torah to the Jews. Only to the Jews. Mount Sinai. But this is such an important commandment. The seventh year you shouldn't work. So let's see. And Anab in the beginning, Sedra of this week's Torah portion, <clears throat> state it says, God spoke to Moses at Mount Sinai, and he said, that the land should rest a resting day for God. Rashi, Rashi says in the name of Torah Kahanim, Torah Kahanim is, is a midrash, Sifra, it's called. Is Ma'enyan. Midrash means explain. This is explanations given to Moses <coughs> on Mount Sinai that were brought down by generations through the rabbis. Ma inyan shmita, it's al Har Sinai. <clears throat> Why do you have this shmita, the seventh year, on Mount Sinai? God spoke to the Jews at Mount Sinai and he said, keep the shmita year, keep the seventh year. That's all he said. Hello, call him. It says all the commandments are said in Mount Sinai. Ella, but this is the answer Rashi gives. Just like Shemitah is said 
the general law and the details on Mount Sinai, which that's rare. Most of the commandments in the Torah, <clears throat> the generality of the law is said, but the details are not said. For instance, the Ten Commandments, Fourth Commandment of the Ten Commandments is keep Shabbat. What, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to keep every Shabbat? It says the six days you should work, and the seventh day you should rest. I mean, just one time. Just pick any six days you want and just work, and then one day just take it easy. You know, go to the beach, something like that. That could be. doesn't have any details. The, 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 the whole Torah, in general, does not have details. That's why God wanted it. That's why God wanted it that way, so that the rabbis <clears throat> would explain what the laws are. A lot of the laws were passed down by Moses. The explanations were given to Moses. A lot of the laws, God just gave the, the principles by which you could de derive the details. But details in the Torah are missing. Details, that's why God wanted it. Right? God wanted it. And one of the reasons he wanted it, like I said, is there's a commandment to learn the Torah. That's what they do in all these yeshiva. They learn the Torah. They learn all the different explanations of the Torah. <clears throat> okay, in any case, the details are missing. But this is one commandment that the details are not missing. And it comes to tell us that this is a general principle, that just like in this commandment, the details are not missing. All of the other commandments, Afkulam, Nemru, Kalolotem, Vedictotem, Sinai, the commandments and all of their details were given to Moses on Mount Sinai. It's just that this was written down, and the others God said, don't write down, pass it down. That's what's called the oral Torah. Now, to understand, we have to understand, for voices their limud, Bahar Sinai, by mitzvah Shemitah Davka. Why is it only by this commandment of Shemitah? Their limud, Hadach, you can't stand, it could say, by another commandment. <clears throat> by Velcha is Veret, Oiski Rechent, Irapratim, by which is the details. Or from Yedem Mitzvah, from Yedem, from another commandment, Vault men up learned, Oif Allah Mitzvah, Shekala Diktukeim, Nemo Basinai. Why did God pick the, the commandment of Shemitah to tell us all the details of that commandment, Shemitah? Take another commandment. There's commandments which are much more important, much more, they say, relevant to every Jew, that from them, God should give, have given all the details, and from that we should learn. And Shemitah, you could leave that as one of the rest of the commandments, that there are no details. Pick another commandment to, to teach us this lesson. We're going to see. In Pasha, simply, maybe we can say, because the Shemitah, it says, <clears throat> in, in a general way, it was said in Pasha Mishpatim, earlier in the Torah, after the giving of the Torah. It says over there in Pasha Mishpatim, remember, right after the Torah was given, Back in the book of Exodus, when in Parshas Bahar, and also it says in Parshas Bahar here in this week's Torah portion, it just repeats it with all the details. And does this over nit But that's not a good a good answer. Why? <clears throat> Vile because as Zayin and Da Nach Mitzvahs, because there's a lot of commandments which are said in Parshas Mishpatim. Parshas Mishpatim has a lot of commandments over there, and there other the other ones are also repeated. So why not take one of the other commandments in Parshas Mishpatim and, and those commandments explain why, why did God pick this commandment to be the example of details? Take another commandment and give the details. Why this one? We're going to see that there's a very good reason. And even a harder question, a mitzvah from Velchem and learned up Allah, mitzvahs, a mitzvah that would teach us all the other commandments. Hadzi, Dach, Gedar, Zion, a mitzvah kalalis. It should be some sort of a general commandment. Take a commandment which every Jew does, and that commandment picked to tell the details. And not this commandment of Shemitah. For Vosat men oiske klem and mitzvah shemitah, why all the commandments shemitah? Which shemitah is a very, very specific commandment. Unat kama v'kama agbalos and a lot of limitations. First of all, the real commandment of shemitah is only done in the time when there's the yovel. What's the yovel? Yovel is the fiftieth year. In the fiftieth year, the all the slaves go free. All the land goes back to its owners. And Yovel is only in the time when all of the Jews are living in the land of Israel. 
<clears throat> now there is no Yovel. When Mashiach comes, or bring the Jews back to Israel. The Yovel, the 50th year, they call it in English, the Jubilee year, the 50th year will, will be. But the Shemitah, and when there's no Yovel, the, the commandment of Shemitah is not in the time of the Torah. Not, I'm sorry, it's not from the Torah. I'm sorry. When I feel like the day is that there are some people that do say we do keep Shemitah nowadays, which that's the law, we do. But it's only... <clears throat> But it's only according to the majority of the rabbis, only from the rabbis. This is not a, a Torah law. It's a rabbinical law. Now, the rabbinical laws have, in fact, the same importance as the Torah laws do, because God was the one who told the rabbis to make the laws up. But nevertheless, the same God that told the rabbis to make the laws up, that to make the laws and to explain laws, whatever, from the rabbis, is that same God said that laws from the rabbis are less severe than those from the Torah. <clears throat> so if so, number one, the commandment of Shemitah is only in the time when the Jubilee year is, and it's not now. So this is a limited time. Also in the place, the, the only place where this commandment is done in the land of Israel, and not outside of Israel. And even more, this is a commandment basically only for farmers. People who work the land. Muzman, therefore, Zogan, we have to say that the commandment of Shemitah is a geves and zin, in a certain sense, a mitzvah kalolis. As mitzvah Shemitah is in a geves and zin, a mitzvah kalolis, vi men. Vet as Viter declared. So we have to understand how is this commandment of Shemitah, how is it, why would did God pick this commandment to tell us this big general principle that just as the details were given in this commandment, so all the rest of the Torah, the details were given for all the commandments, even though we don't see them. Why did God pick this commandment as the example, right, to give the, the details? What's, what's so important? Okay, the Rebbe is going to explain something to us here. <clears throat> what exactly the commandments are? What's the point of the commandments? Why did God give commandments? And how Shemitah, in one way, even though it's so limited, only to farmers and only to farmers in the land of Israel and only the time of the, but nevertheless, this is like the ideal commandment, the ideal commandment. And we're going to see why. <clears throat> From this, we're also going to get a, a, an insight into what the commandments are in general. When we do a commandment, what exactly are we doing? What's the point of the commandments? What's the point of the commandments? Right? Someone wrote to me, people make comments on these classes, and someone wrote to me that the, the, in the third temple, there's not going to be any sacrifices because sacrifices are cruel. They're only for our sins. and this. So I wrote them back and I said, listen, the fact of the matter is the animals did not bring any forgiveness. What brought the forgiveness is that we did exactly what God wants. I mean, also in addition, the, 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 the sacrifices in the temple were only for unintentional sins, shogeg. The command, the, the, the sacrifices were only for unintentional. If a person did an intentional sin, he purposely stole money, he purposely that's killed, he purposely what raped, he purposely did a sin, there was no sacrifice in the holy temple for that. He didn't bring sacrifices. And also, when, what did a person have to do? He had to repent. He had to repent, he had to make restitution, he had to make a resolution. The first is between him and God. Or if he damaged somebody, he has to give the, the repay the damages, whatever the damages are. There's a whole system of damages in, in, uh, that you have to pay. But the, the temple only took care of those sins which were done unintentionally, shogeg. And of course, there were a lot of command, the, the sacrifices which were Thanksgiving sacrifices and holiday sacrifices that had nothing to do with sins. And nevertheless, the idea of what is a commandment, what is this idea of the commandment? Only in Judaism are there commandments. There's no other religion in the world that has commandments from God, detailed commandments from God. They have rituals, they have their, their heritage, they have their holidays, they have, but it's not directly from God. Right? These are their ceremonies, whatever they have. But commandments from God, the only reason that even claims that they have such a thing is Judaism. That's the whole essence of Judaism. 
That's the evil of Christianity, that he wanted to wipe out all the commandments. Now we're going to see what commandments are. In Plug, Suvas, Darfman, Dasagan, what do we have to say? <clears throat> oh, here we go. I'm sorry. Later in the sentence, what does it say? It says, the God spoke to Moses and he said, on the seventh, uh, when you come to the land of Israel, the land should rest. Okay. Afterwards, it says, six years you should plant your seeds, six your fields, six years you should work on your vineyards, whatever, and etc. And the seventh day you should rest. Says the Rebbe, it doesn't make any sense over here. Why do you have to say six years you should work on your field, six years you should plant your... The Baltus is doch nitkain sivoy. God is not saying you have to work on your field six years. If you're not a farmer, you don't have to work on the field. And even if you are a farmer, you can let your field just lay fallow if you want to. There's no commandment that you have to work on the field. Nor in here from your shoes. It's optional. You want to work, you can... Why does the Torah have to say six years you should work on your field and the seventh year you should rest? Just say the seventh year it's forbidden to work. You want to not work all the time, don't work all the time. Mehechi Tesi, how do you know as men, mentor as nit? Right? But as mentor as nit, was men darv zogan shanim. Why would you think that you don't? have to work, that the Torah has to tell you, you must work, right? You do whatever you want. You do whatever you want. Why does the Torah have to tell you six years you should work on your field? But the fact is you don't have to work on your field six years. And not only that, what's so, so important, you have to work six years on your field. That's an important thing. It's not, it's not a commandment. The fact is it is not a commandment. Farmers do not have to work on their fields for six years. Why does the Torah say you have to? Muzman Zogan, we have to say, as Oich Der Sheishanim, also the six years you have to work on your field. Gate Ryan and then in from Mr. Shemitah, this is included in the commandment of Shemitah. This commandment is Nit Nor Obeshana Shviz. The commandment is not only resting on the seventh year, nor Oich, but also part of the commandment is that six years you have to plant your field. Is a tile, this is a part of the commandment. Dos is in Sveofanim, in two ways. Number one, see, is a hachana, that the six years that we work on the field, this is a preparation to the commandment of Shemitah, in order that we can carry out Ubashana, Shvit, in order that we can carry out what it says on the seventh day, on the seventh year, we should rest. Right? If you work for six years, then in the seventh year, you can rest. Thus is, or maybe we can say it the other way around. Thus is the tachlis, this is the goal. The goal from Shemitah is the whole purpose, why there is this seventh year, is in order that afterwards we can work on the field for six years. And something like we have on Shabbat, right? What do we have on Shabbat? The Rebbe's going to talk about that. What is the purpose of Shabbat? Shabbat is resting from the previous days that we worked or maybe shabbat is connecting to god so that the next six days that we work after shabbat will have an awareness of the creator we'll have an awareness that we're not alone we'll have an awareness that god is helping us we'll have an awareness who we're working for so is the shabbat is it the end of the previous week or is it a preparation for the coming week the same thing with shemitah we're going to see shemitah is even more uh, indicative of what the commandments are than even Shabbat. Same thing with Shemitah. Is this resting year, the farmers have to rest, is that a preparation for the coming years? Right? You let your land lay fallow one year that nourishes the land, increases the land, and also it gives you an appreciation that God is with you, God is bringing the produce, God is helping you. <clears throat> that the, the resting year is the preparation for the six years, or maybe not. Maybe the six years, they're the preparation, and the goal is Shabbat. The goal is the Shemitah. That's the goal. We work for six years, and then we rest the year, we rest ourselves up, 
not as a preparation for anything, just that we can, we deserve a rest, right? Retirement. Their Indian from Shemitah, the whole thing of Shemitah simply is that on the seventh year, farmers on the seventh year, they have to let the land rest. Sadecha, your field, you shouldn't plant. Karmacha, your vineyard, you shouldn't work on. And on the seventh year, that's the six years. On the seventh year, there has to be a resting year. In the all the yanim and all the previous things that you worked on in the six years, on the seventh year, you have to rest. And then it says, Ki Tomro, when you say Manochal, if a person might ask a question, one second, if I'm not going to work in the seventh year, so what am I going to eat in the eighth year? And not only that, what am I going to eat in the ninth year? If I don't work on that seventh year, so there's not going to be any crops for the eighth year. What am I going to do in the eighth year? I'm going to plant in the eighth year. That's going to take time to grow. Right? And is there going to be enough in the ninth year? <clears throat> to the, I don't have anything. So especially the eighth year. What am I going to eat in the year after the Shemitah? When I didn't work on the land, I'm just going to have to grovel around, see maybe there's a couple of potatoes on the of them, and it says, answers the Torah, says, I commanded my year, my blessing, there's going to be enough food for three years. What do you mean for three years? They're talking from the minion from Mitzvah Shemitah. The main thing of this, <clears throat> of the Mitzvah of Shemitah is, I'll just say a parenthetical statement over here. There's a person that I know, he lived in a place, lives in a place called Yitzar, and he had uh, a vineyard and he made wine. Over there up in the northern part of Israel, it's very ideal for, for wine. So he had wine, and um, <clears throat> it came the Shemitah year, vines. So everybody said, listen, you got to work on the land, and maybe you know what you can do? You can get non-Jews to work on the land. You can sell the land, sell the land to the non-Jews temporarily, and then they can work. And he said, I'm not going to do any of those tricks. I'm not going to do any of those things. It could be permissible. I'm not going to work on the land at all. I'm not going to now. This is very painful for a person who put a lot of work into his land to just see the land. He's a worker. He's a worker. He loves to work on the land. It's a wonderful feeling. And he has the one year not do any work on the land. Just let the land go. No, it's been, he's, he didn't have any pain. He was happy. He was happy. He was doing the commandment of God. No, everybody said that's it. You know, your your, your grapes are all going to get they're going to wrecked and they're going to anyway. The year after that, so he harvested the grapes, he made wine. His wine won prizes all over the world. It was the, I, I'm not a big understander of wine. My wife is, is it, run all sorts of prizes. It was very good. Okay, I'm not saying this is for everybody, but here we have an example that it's possible if you do what God says on the seventh year, that there's a blessing for all the other years. The main thing of the, of the mitzvah of Shemitah is that we month we God demands by a Jew as Ayn Mol that once in seven years that he should separate himself from all of the earthly things. Erdish Beshefinition, anything that deals with working in the in the Bedar finition, anything that work deals with the earth. Erzalnit Haben Sutan, he should not have any connection with Malachasa or it's with working on the ground which are connected to the bread, lechem, shalav that from it, person lives. Where does wheat come from? Where does bread come from? The ground. On erzal, zich, and gans and farlars, and he should totally rely himself on God. As ervet in, that he will give to him, a parnasa, lamaylam yatev, that he'll give to him food above, above nature. A seder of all I mean, we, we we sort of take it for granted, but everything that we see in the in the uh, grocery store, it all comes from the ground. Everything that's in the grocery store comes comes from the ground. Meat, cheese, all this, all the animals eat from the ground, right? No matter what there is, it comes from the ground. Mushrooms, maybe you could pick them. It could be mushrooms. I think they float through the air, but they have to have. Except for that, right? Everything that there is there comes from the ground that we have. Water, I guess not. Water. 
So you could live on mushrooms and water. Not very much of a the substance, su sustenance. As Rove as a man, the majority of the time, so it says in the seventh year, you have to separate yourself from the ground. The, <clears throat> this is not a thing you have to do all the time. Rove is among the majority of time a Jew has to deal with the world in order to, it says, refine the world, work on the world. That's our job. That's why God put us in the world. That's why he gave it the Torah in the world. We have to work in the world. Das is dach, their inyan was isaba because God desired it, that wants, God wants to have a world. And this is through, and God created the world through this name Elohim. Elohim is one of God's names. This is the numerical value. If you count, instead of kof, you have to put a hey. If you count, this is the same numerical value as Hateva, 86, 87. 86, right? Yeah, 86, right? As Bechdei, in order, their Adam, a person, Zol Zich, should, Osik Zayn, Al Pi Torah, a person should use the Torah and act according to the Torah in all the things in the world. And that by means of this, we refine and we work on the world. That's the majority of the time. But in some times, in certain times, it is demanded that a person has to remember that God, you can get too occupied in the world. It's demanded by a Jew that he has to go away from the world. <clears throat> Even though it's true, you always have to refine the world. Yes, it's true. But in the time, once in a while, a person has to separate himself from the world and remember the creator of the world to be higher than the world and remove himself from the world. And that's going to be the whole idea of Shemitah. And that's the whole idea of Torah and the whole idea of commandments, the whole idea of the Jewish people, as we're going to learn, God willing, tomorrow. And now let's learn the Yom Yom for today. When a person puts a, a large, large talus, you have to cover your head. Okay, those people who put on a big talit, you know, the religious Jews, we put on a, a small talit under our under our shirt. Some people put it over the shirt. And then we put a big talit, which is called a prayer shawl. When you put it on, it's very essentially to cover your head and <clears throat> your face down to your mouth, only when you're making the blessing. That's what it says in the system, but it's our custom to cover the eyes with the upper part of the talit, only to the eyes. Okay, during the days of Sphira, we learn tractate Sota, one page each day, in, a, in, in addition to, it's one of the tractates, it has 49 pages in it, so you learn one page for every day, in addition to the regular learning. Have a good day with Mashiach, now God willing, there'll be a class at three o'clock, hope to see you all, shalom, overacha, have a good day, and a blessed day, and a meaningful day, and I hope to see you at three.